afternoon, dear teachers. Welcome to our third webinar from Richmond. Today, we are extremely grateful for having you here, and we are excited to share the following topic, IBL, Inquiry-Based Learning. As our speaker in this session, we are fortunate to be joined by Mrs. Luli Alava. She's a 14 experienced English teacher. Ms. Alava is C1 Cambridge Advanced English Certified. She loves to develop technological skills in her students, supported by an IBC C1 certificate, in the use of digital tools and pedagogical problems. Ms. Alava, welcome. Thank you, Anderson. Welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about IBL, that means inquiry-based learning. And um, uh, for that, I will need the help of my presentation. This presentation was done for, uh, for a colleague of mine here in Santillana. It's a quite fine presentation. Let me share the screen. And here we are. I... I would like to tell you that if you have any uh, question or anything to say, please uh, write through the chat box and uh, let's begin. Inquiry-based learning is a methodology that help us uh, to help, uh, help us or help our students to explore about uh, what is ar uh, surrounding them. And uh, um, with this methodology, we can motivate them to ask. So the main thing here working with IBL is to make our students ask about everything. And obviously we're going to work with questions. Most of our books works with a big question, an example that, that is um, uh, something to introduce a topic and to work through the, the unit. So one of the main rules when we are talking about inquiry-based learning is that obviously we have to work with questions, but we cannot give the answer, okay? So um, why? Because, uh, because inquiry-based learning does not demand a right answer. It's looking for an explanation. What we want us as teachers is our students to explore about the topic and to want to know more. So uh, this is something that I have uh, told some teachers that for me is like, like um, I don't know if you like gossips. An example, I love every gossip about the royal family, about uh, Kate Middleton, Queen Elizabeth. And uh, well, as I love to know about the, the royal family, I uh, really uh, love to explore and read all uh, in magazines and in the internet about them. So I have a conception about, about this family based on that information. And that's it. The same with, uh, is, is what we want our students, for them to know more, to explore more about the topic they, they they are interested in or or what we as teachers can get our students to get interested in okay so first rule as i told you do not tell the truth do not tell the answer do not tell the the, the solution because then they may be um won't uh, explore for more is that okay now in this webinar we're going to cover um traditional education versus IBL, the use of IBL, the differentiation in there. Uh, how can we empower our, our students in the um, want to know more and the effects that it has? And some examples and tips for you to plan a good IBL lesson, okay? It doesn't mean that once we finish this webinar, you are going to be completely ready to do these this, uh, IBL lessons. But you have to um, inquire more. You have to ask more about this. You have to look for more information about this. But now I am just sowing a seed of IBL in you. And uh, with that, 
or say, say that, I will begin and tell you everything that I know. Uh, my experience in, in IBL was as um, accompanying my, my uh, Spanish teachers at my school, where they used to work once a week with this, this methodology. And nowadays, nowadays, what is a good option is to work not only with information from books or from, from readers, but from internet. That's why we're talking about hybrid classes. We can uh, ask our students to look in, 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 the, in their, um, I don't know, Google or, or uh, Wikipedia uh, using their mobile devices or uh, just getting into their computer like in, in a flip classroom uh, task. But the thing is that working with books, texts, textbooks, and the internet that makes hybrid classes, okay? So we have to be open for that. Then um, um, I'm going to explain you by now, how is it uh, like the cycle of, of, the, um, of the, how to work with IBL? First, it comes the orientation. When we um, talk about orientation, it's the same as every class as every lesson, every day, you have to engage your students with a topic, with a topic or a question, something that they would like to know after you present it. Um, and uh, uh, with that, you're going to ask, ask them for some uh, um, brainstorming session, maybe what do they know? So then you may have a prior knowledge, what do they know? What would they like to know? What are they missing? What they, uh, and like, um, what is the, uh, I don't know the phrase in English, but it is like, uh, sabiendo que terreno pisamos, all right? As teachers. So um, that's the orientation part, as I, and as I told you, is like every lesson of ours, that you begin with a question or with something uh, in very inviting, very engaging, like a video or, or, or a chart with information and so on. After you um, have, uh, have known their, uh, your students' prior knowledge, then you can go to the second step. As they have given you some answers, then they can form groups maybe uh, where they can cover all of these um, all of these. Uh, answers or possible answers, possible solutions to the questions that you have given them uh, that are uh, that we call hypotheses. okay? Here is where we uh, share what we know and what uh, do they think is the, the possible solution as I told you before. And uh, here we go directly to the third part or the third step of our process. That is the planning and investigation step where you have to uh, make your students to inquire and to research more, to find all the uh, uh, um, evidence or all the information that can support the solutions that they have given. Here, they are looking for the answers. They are looking for the truth. They are finding information and collecting it, okay? So uh, this is a very important plan, uh, a very important part, a very important stage of this process. And here will happen something. If, if they um, think that something is missing, that something is missing, anything is missing, then they can go back and replantear la hipótesis. They can think again that maybe the, the answer that they have given is not correct, so they can change it. Where can, I, can they find out that? Here, in the third part, in the planning and investigation part. If they don't feel comfortable with their own answer, they can go back and change it, okay? Otherwise, they can go and continue researching about that and finding evidence that supports their answers. Um, then comes the part of the analyze and interpretation, where as a group, they have to determine if the, if the um, information, the data that they have is correct, then they can proceed and share it to the community. Otherwise, they 
in that moment on, on stage number four, they can discover again that something is not working well and um, they will be um, maybe finding something else or again, going back to the second stage and change the hypothesis, okay? And um, what else can I tell you here is, um, beg your pardon. Okay, um, here in, um, after the analyze and interpretation, they are completely ready to share their product, their investigation, what they know, what is their, their, their truth, okay? And here we, can, we are ready to go to the conclusion. Here in the conclusion, they are presenting to the others, to other colleagues, other classmates, other groups, what they have find, uh, found out about the topic, the original topic, and their solutions, their research, their evidences. And here may happen something very interesting that some others may ask some questions to them that let them know that something is missing. And here I can compare, as I told you before, about the gossips about the royal family. It's like when I told you, I have a, 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 a conception about this, this family. But do I really know if that is the true? And I'm going to make your question by now. I would like you to open your chat box and, and type in there yes or no for this question. Okay, this is a question. I, I love gossips about the royal family. And I have read a lot in magazines, in the internet and everything. Do I own the truth about the royal family? Yes or no? Do I know everything about the royal family? Yes or no? Please click on the chat, yes or not. Not click, sorry, type. Yes or no? Okay, let me make the question again. I love gossips about royal family. And I read a lot about the royal family in magazines, in internet, and everywhere. My question is, do I know everything about the royal family? Yes or no? Okay, thank you, Maria Vega. Yes, exactly, no, because I am not part of the family. I do not live with them. I do not even have a cup of tea with Queen Elizabeth. I have no idea of how they are, okay? So the thing here is that when I go with my friends to have a cup of coffee, then we discuss about the royal family, okay? We talk about uh, Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and so on. And then it's when I say, okay, I know this. I know that, that, that Meghan Markle is this way and Prince Harry, I don't know, is Mandarina or whatever. And, and they say, no, because I have read in, in Ola magazine that they say something. And then comes my other friend and says, hey, no, that's not true because I have read here in, in, in this internet page that it's, it, it's a real source that it happens the other way. So what are we doing? We are here in this stage of the conclusion. We are discussing our findings. And now we are open to other um, answers and the other uh, persons are listening to me about my answer. So we are like um, making one, one, only one concept. And then as a group, we set another truth, okay? So it's the same with IBL. It's the same with IBL. Your students won't know the answers because you're not giving the answers to them. You have to make them to explore about the situation, about the, the problem that you have given them, the question that you have given them. And they have to uh, do the research, find the solutions, find the evidence that support that solutions that they have. And then they have to discuss in groups or with the community in order to determine what is the new truth for them. So that's IBL, that's IBL, pure, pure IBL. And 
even there, even there in the conclusion part, you are not allowed to give the answer unless, unless you are going to evaluate them. Okay, so if you're going to have an evaluation about uh, this topic and you need them to certify that's the answer, then you're allowed to tell the answer over there. But otherwise, do not do that because it's a good idea to always uh, for them to always have a a a, a question and another question to to want to know more. Same happens to me with the royal family. Once I have spoken with my friends, then I want to know more, so I go again to internet and and find something else about them. Okay, so that's that's the way of working with IBL. Always have, having something to inquire, to question about. Okay, is there any question up to here? Is everything clear? Fingers up. Okay, well, then I will, thank you. Then it will, I will continue, okay? Um, here, in order to develop or to make a lesson plan to uh, work with this methodology, then you have to have the help of these regulatory cards. You can find them in the internet, just, just click or, or type regulatory cards and you will find many examples of them. What are the regulatory cards? These are some activities that you're, you're, you can use with your students and later you can make your students choose what to do. So one, uh, some of the activities that are presented in here are in example, to inquire with another student, to make questions to other students, or maybe to discuss an inquiry, okay? Um, maybe inquire on your own. But the thing here is that you have to know your groups. If you know your groups, then you can set your group as a talkative group in examples. You can, you can ma make them to uh, share their ideas in example. Or maybe if, if these, these groups are not so are maybe the shy kind of shy ones then you can make them um to um analyze in the structure or to prove a generalization by their own or to uh, uh try something okay so the thing is that once you know your groups then you can determine what works better for them okay so regulatory cards are some activities for you to help uh, your students to develop this methodology, some activities, okay? Then let's go um, to the steps in the, in the in, uh, when planning your IBL lesson. And here I'm going to share you my, my uh, experience that I have with, uh, as I told you, accompanying my, my Spanish teachers in, in the school I used to work. They, um, they had usually one, one uh, day per week to... Um, um, share with the with the with my students uh, these um, moments of IBL. Okay, I don't know if your school uh, may have the the um, this disposition, this disposition of having one day per week to do this, or maybe you can do uh, you uh, uh, by your own. You can do it uh, once a month or whatever you need or what you think is is a good idea. And, but the thing here is that uh, they used to um, have their students, the students uh, in a small group um, to work with some things that are called the prompts. And the prompts are very important. Uh, why? Because this is like the, the, um, the guide the, uh, that makes the guides, guidelines that make them uh, easy for uh, to communicate with others in a, in a way that it's good for IBL. For us as English teacher, it would be a fantastic idea to have these prompts because if we are offering our kids with these prompts the chance of communication, the chance of communicating communicating with each other, to make questions in, in this case. In example, look at this uh, uh, chart, little chart that says posing questions or noticing and wondering. Uh, th uh, these are some examples of the kind of questions that uh, um, we as teachers used to have in a big posters like like this, with uh, all the all the questions in, in in a list. So the students can pick any of the questions to inquire others. How do we use? How did we used to work in in our IBL sessions with a book? 
Uh, these books obviously were done, were were written in Spanish because we were working in Spanish by by that time, and uh, these books um, uh, were something like this. Okay, let let uh, let me share with you. Um, one of these books was called Pixie, and I'm going to make you a question by now. Uh, Pixie is a character. Pixie is a character that uh, jumps a character who jumps okay so i would like you to tell me what do you think can pixie be if i tell you that pixie is a character who jumps can you ask me uh, answer me in the chat box please what do you think is pixie if i didn't telling you that pixie is a character who jumps is it a rabbit is it a cricket is it a ball what is it can you tell me please what do you think is pixie Okay. A bunny, perfect. A rabbit, fantastic. Yes, good, good answers, perfect. Well, the thing here is that um, I really don't know. <laughs> the book didn't say that because the thing here was to inquire what is Pixie. And all the, all the text in this book was about uh, all, all the information that you can imagine about Pixie in order to determine what was Pixie. Finally, uh, even the teacher, the Spanish teacher didn't know what was Pixie. She thought it was, uh, it was a girl. I always thought it was a fairy. And uh, it, uh, the book did, uh, do not say that. But the thing here is that the students all the time want to know what is Pixie, what is Pixie. And for that, they were using the prompts. They were picking up the questions in the in the cardboard in order to ask something uh, like, um, how is it true that Pixie can jump in long distances? Isn't that to fly or something like that? Uh, or maybe to say something like, um, I have noticed that uh, Pixie does not have wings. So uh, maybe it's just uh, not jumping, but hopping. Okay, so the thing here is to use these prompts. And for us, English teacher, this is a fantastic resource. Why? Because we are modeling our students to communicate in a certain way. Now, as, um, as, a, as a teacher, I had the opportunity of see my students to make some kind of questions really uh, like in a high order uh, thinking level okay uh they uh second graders six years old second graders uh, were uh, very used to make questions like or 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 to say their own thoughts or a, an idea to share them like this way um i think we can jump into our dreams and for me it was what a, a, a six years old baby saying some things like that okay so that's are one of the results of IBL, making them to question and to solve or, or to find solutions completely different than the usual and, and average kid, okay? And uh, another thing that I found very interesting um, um, was a, a, with a fourth grader, he was nine years old maybe, and he wants, after I have uh, my lesson, my usual lesson, then comes the recess time, they went out of the room. But this, this uh, little kid came back and asked me something like, I'm going to speak Spanish. Something like, uh, Miss, en el, en el, lo que usted explicó hace un momento, eh, pude notar que lo que usted dijo aquí no comprende o no se ve igual que la regla que nos acaba de explicar. With so many words, like an adult, I was thinking this, this was not a kid, this was like, I don't know, un enano, <laughs> a, a pygmy. So the thing here is that um, this, this little guy is completely used to work with so many words and, and a special kind of question that goes direct, directly to what he wants, okay? Why? Because he knows and he has worked for three years with this kind of, of, of prompts, okay? So that's what I like about uh, building an IBL lesson, working with prompts. 
in order to make our students to speak and communicate something very precise. Well, then the second part of the of, of, of establishing uh, or, or making or building up our lessons is to um, uh, determine which actions or which which activities are we going to work with. So for that, we need the regulatory cards, as I told you. Then comes the part of the exploration. Once we have uh, have uh, brainstormed then and uh, having possible solutions, it's a time to work and find uh, something about the their own answers. Okay, the answers for their own questions. All right, so they can work in a, in a, uh, asynchronously completely uh, in by their own or maybe with our guide in a, in a, in an hour in once a week or once a month doesn't matter. The thing is that uh, we as teachers have to help them to explore and to want to know more. Okay. Then comes um, the part of the explanation where, where uh, when they are exploring the answers, then we can have a chat with, with the teachers, with other students in groups. And here comes again the part of the prompts. So we can always set our prompt to be used all the time in every, every time we want to make questions, okay? And then it comes a part of uh, finding the evidence of what we say, because we have to train our students to uh, manage or to handle the, the truth with evidence, to, be, uh, to have the support of what they say. We, they cannot say anything because they said so, and that's it. No, uh, they have to prove that what they say is the truth because they have go to uh, very good sources, not any kind of sources. You cannot go to the El Rincón del Vago. You have to go to precise sources. Even Wikipedia is not a good solution because as you know, Wikipedia has uh, some uh, um, uh, concepts for, uh, given from, uh, for, uh, from many people. So, so you have to go to maybe a, a, a medical magazine or something very, very real, okay? Then it comes a part of presenting the results. As I told you, it's the time of your of your students to share what they have found, and uh, and tell uh, others uh, uh, their ideas, their solutions. And here comes uh, this this part where the other students can ask them. And I have heard that what you say it's it's okay, but I think something is missing. So when they say uh, their own ideas, the others share their ideas, then may your students have more questions about the, the, the topic they had. And here comes again another cycle or go back, going back in the cycle to find more uh, information about that, okay? And um, finally, their reflection and evaluation with everyone together, as I told you, when I go with my friends to the uh, to have a coffee and discuss about the royal family, we are reflecting and evaluating what we know. Is that true? Isn't it the true? What is correct? What do you know? What do we know? What is for us now? What is the, the, the truth? So this is this happens at the end of the session, okay? And here, obviously, as I told you, it can uh, be open another door to another question or maybe to go back and inquire more or know more about the topic, okay? So if there any, is there any question up to here? Is everything clear? Thumbs up if you think is everything else, okay? Well, um these are some these are some what i'm presenting now are some of the uh things that you may use when designing a, a lesson plan for ibl in example of uh, um, when is a good time to monitor my students where shall i uh, introduce the prompts where are we go are we going to use the prompts at the beginning at the end three times in a in a session or every, every two weeks, every two readings, every two sessions, you decide that. What, which resource works the best with my students? What kind of a group do I have? Shall I, uh, uh, shall I uh, um, introduce Inquire now or later? 
uh, how can I engage my students? In example, if you want to engage your students to a topic, you cannot tell your students, okay, kids, today we're going to talk about the cycle of the water. Uh, because when you say that, you are already telling the answer. Maybe some of your uh, their bro the brothers of your students or siblings of your students have already talked about the cycle of the world, so they have any notion, or maybe they have talked with that with their parents. So they they know about the cycle of the water. So it is not a good idea to say, "Hey kids, let's talk about the cycle of the water." But some a question like like this, an example, um, kids, did you know what would happen if there is no water in the world? If there is no rain in the world, what would happen? And then your students may say something like, "Oh, the plants will die if there is no if there are no plants. Maybe animals are going to die, and we're going to die. Everybody's going to die." <laughs> okay. Um, the thing here is that they have to give uh, their their answers to that, and then try to know more. So it's a good thing. How are you going to engage your students? Okay. And so other things later than it, that if you find that it's a good uh, um, thing that you have done, um, you can try it later with other students or with other groups. So everything if, that you do in, in inquiry-based learning, it's a good option. Just try and try again and use it or recycle. Okay. Of course, obviously, the use of technological devices uh, or or um, or maybe the textbooks. What you decide that is a good source for your students. Okay, depending on the age too. Now, I'm going to tell you about some uh, some tips about um, for some tips for for a best uh, lesson planning. Uh, first of all. You have to create or engage your students through a good topic, uh, uh, something very engaging, as I told you, or some tasks, some activities for them uh, that are appropriate for their age, for their level, about what they know, about what they may know or might know, or maybe they're missing, and uh, about uh, and and for your group specifically for your group, how are your groups? What is better for them? And if you do this right, then you are creating a student buy-in. You're making them to be interested in that. The same that I feel with the royal family, that I want to know more and more and more. That's my, my topic. So if you choose something very appropriate for them, then you are going to create a, 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 a student buy-in. They're going to be very fond in the topic that you're giving them. And that is has to be accompanied by a safe learning environment. The classroom, it might be virtual or presential, has to be really, really, really free to share ideas. It has to be really bullying free or maybe even grammar free because what we want is them to communicate, them to communicate their ideas, their thoughts, their findings, okay? To uh, uh, tell them everybody to share with everybody, everyone in the group in order to know more, okay? Obvious, obviously, you as a teacher have to do some, some. Uh, you have to be aware of some things like uh, managing the, the classroom when the students are um, presenting their material. Why? Because it takes time. So you have to uh, determine a certain time for each presentation. In example, if they are working with PPTs, maybe it will take, uh, I don't know, about a minute uh, and a half. But if they are working with videos, it doesn't have to be larger than three minutes because it's going to be like a, a little boring if you pass the time. Or maybe if they're going to make a role play to present the results, then it, it will take some time. So you have to be very aware of the time as a teacher. And of course, in uh, managing the group work. Remember, you cannot, in this inquiry-based learning, you cannot tell your students to just make a group. Uh, if you do that, Pepito is going to go with Juanita and they're going to be together because they're really good friends and it is not like a good idea to do that. What you have to do is to uh, check which students are the, I don't know, the ones who love to read and put the one in each group. Then who are the best drawers and put one in, in, in each of the groups and so on. And even that one that everybody say, hey, él no quiere trabajar. Okay, that, that one, it's, it's a good idea to put it in one of the groups because 
um, at least they can, uh, I don't know, manage time or making the work. They eat, even they can be the, the, the chief of the, of, the, of the group and they can make the others work and find the solutions. So it's, uh, um, it's a good idea to, for you to determine who are the ones who are going to go work in groups and do not uh, make them have groups by colors or randomly because it, uh, it's much better to try to make them all work with everyone, okay? Uh, of course, uh, if you can determine something to assess your students, but you can even make some changes in there in the way you're going to assess your students to know what do they know how are you going to assess them by brainstorming by uh, some uh, activities questionnaires etc cetera, etc cetera. so the thing is that, or maybe in the presentation so they can change all the time okay so uh, don't worry if there is any change in your plans because uh, what we want is this to be this is something something very active Okay, this is not passive. This is not something that you are just set and that's it. No, this is something very active and it, it's, it's uh, um, they can change anything. You can change anything anytime. Okay. And of course, let your students know that everything that they do and everything that they um, learn that could be not okay, that could be wrong, it's okay because we can learn from failures too, okay? It's like, like design thinking where you uh, learn from mistakes and then you try again and then trial, error, trial, error, that's it, okay? So those are my tips by now to create a, a lesson plan. And remember that the co uh, a good class design matters and matters a lot. And remember to try to engage your students with some kind of a um, nice video to make them curious about uh, what they, uh, what you want them to know and so on. Then when working in the lesson plan, still you have to determine some time to make your students um, presentations, inquiries, uh, research, etc., etc. Uh, in example, when when they uh, at the beginning when they are making the questions, when you're using the prompts, and uh, or maybe you are asking some questions and they're giving you the answers in a brainstorm, maybe uh, you will have a time for that, and they will have the time for asking too. So the moment you that you're giving them some time to ask, obviously you need a moment to answer. So that takes time, okay? So for questions, maybe it could be up 20% of the time, maybe then for the answers the same. And then they have to look for the information that takes time too, and interpret the information that they have. So take that time in, in account. Of course, you, need, you will need the time for sharing the explanations too the presentations, the discussions, and finally, more time to collate their experiences or their information. And this is the most important part because this is a time when they discuss about what they have found and uh, here they will set what is the truth for them, okay? And uh, a good thing, a good thing, thing about using IBL is that here we, with this way of working, with this methodology, what we are going to um, develop in our students is something that usually happens in math classes. In math classes, we develop the problem solving skills. And with inquiry based learning, we are doing the same too. So this is why one of the things that I really like about IBL. When uh, why why developing the problem solving because they have to they obviously at the beginning they have something to 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 answer and then they have to find a solution for this. So um, the moment they they make their own answers, they uh, find the evidence, they find more solutions. They maybe change the hypothesis 
and so on. And when they even uh, uh, share their ideas and others uh, give them some other aspects that they haven't covered and they have to go back and learn again, this is part of the problem solving skills. So that's that's why I really love this, this ideal methodology. Now, um, I'm going to um, share with you some differentiation between the traditional way of working in our classes, in our lessons, and how do we work with IDL, okay? Uh, obviously, we uh, nowadays we're working with digital tools and, and, and so on, but the thing here is that we are not, with IBL, we are not working the, the traditional way anymore. Okay, here, this is a space of communication. This is a, a space of discussion and researching. So don't imagine that you're going to be in your class with all your, your students sitting in one in each of your space, of their spaces and, and so on. No, this is something very, uh, maybe even chaotic in order to, uh, the thing is to find the, the, the solution in here, okay? And to uh, discuss about it. So um, for this, you have to be prepared. Obviously, you are not going to be a teacher anymore, the usual or traditional teacher. No, you have to be open to be a motivator. You have to engage your students to the topic. You have to be a diagnostician. When the moment you make a brainstorm, you are going to know what do they know, what are they missing, what do they want to know, and so on. So you become a diagnostician here. You are going to be a guide. You have to guide your students to, in order to find the, 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 the solutions. And here, here I can give you a tip. Uh, in, as we as teachers want our students, our students to be inquiring all the time about what surrounds them, um, a way of guiding them is not a complete guide uh, with all the solutions for them, but something like this. An example, you can tell your students to, if they ask, are asking you about the, uh, I, I don't know, the cycle of the water. Uh, so you can tell them, okay, you can find some information about the, the, this topic here or about this question that I gave you uh, here in this link uh, about fluids, in this link about um, um, uh, the certification and in this link about how to make and prepare a ham and cheese sandwich. So what do the students do? What do your students do? They know that the topic here with, with the, uh, the cycle of the water has to be or has something to do with fluids, has something to do with the certification, but obviously it doesn't have to do anything with how to prepare a ham and cheese sandwich. So uh, that's a guide that you can give them, not all this, uh, the solutions, but something for them to be inquired, for, uh, to let them categorize what is good, what is useful, and what is not useful, what do they, they do not need so they can discard it. That's a good way of guiding them. Remember, what we want is our students to be inquiring all the time. And obviously, as uh, teachers, we're going to be innovators. We, uh, we need lots of information from internet, from others, uh, experience from, from anyone. Um, and that makes us to innovate, to take the ideas of others and make them ours to apply them in our rooms, okay? Uh, uh, obviously, we're going to be experimenters. At, at least at the beginning and may, maybe later too, uh, we're always going to experiment because our, our children, our children, uh, they are always coming in a different way. Okay, so we're going, always going to be experimenting with them. Okay, and even if we have some a, a topic um, that is related with science, science or math, then more experience, more experience too. Okay, and um, we're going to become researchers, the same as our students. We have to uh, at least have a, have a notion of what we are talking about with our students. So we have to become researchers too. We are going to have we have to be modelers, and in this part is where we have the the prompts that I told you, the list of the questions that we might have for communication. 
uh, we model our students how to work with the language in here and how to make the questions and how to uh, uh, say the answers in a, in a formal way and in, in a very explicit way. We are going to be mentors, of course, after we follow all the things that I have uh, previously in, in list you. Uh, we we'll become mentors and collaborators. And of course, we are always learners. We never end learning of our students. OK, so these are the, the roles that we may have as a teacher. No, may have. We're, we're going to have as a teacher when working with IBL. And uh, what another thing that I can share with you uh, in my personal experience is uh, both ways, as I told you, as a teacher and as a mother, too. Um, as a teacher, I noticed that my students uh, used to work like the, the group is like one individual. Why? Because they already know who is the one who always make the good, the good questions or who is the one who knows how to, uh, I don't know, read and find the, the uh, perfect information, who are the ones who are good in, in, in making uh, fantastic posters to, to express something. So they, as they, as the year goes through, they, know each other and they know on who to rely on so, so who to rely on so um they work as i told you the whole group as an individual and for the student outcomes i can tell you the experience of my own children well my my children are not children anymore they are uh, they are grown ups now 18 and, and 20 years old but when they were like 14 or 16 years old they um they were like different kids okay at the beginning all the primary they were working with the ibl okay they were working with with ibl methodology the whole primary from not only primary but initial levels too and uh, here they were uh, when they finish or end the primary school uh at I, as I told you, 14, 16 years old, they were uh, like a different kind of teenagers. Usually teenagers tend to go to their rooms, to be in their own world, to be with their headphones all the time, listening to music and so on. And I am not telling you that when children are, uh, are different, they, they love music, they love to play video games and, and so on. But something that I can say about these these two kids is that when we have meetings with adults meeting they were in our meetings and they have interesting uh conversation conversation with adults okay they weren't they weren't afraid to communicate with adults why because they are completely used to learn from others to ask others okay, to inquire others. And every time they hear something, they can ask as an adult, why do you say that? And so on. So uh, obviously, uh, this as a joke, you cannot tell my, my, my children, hey, no te pongas la vacuna porque te van a poner un chip. Okay, so if, if you say that to them, they will say, where in which magazine have you read that in which your medical journal have you read that because they only they are all the time looking for the, the base of what you say and evidence and on the contrary same happens when they say something when they say something they what they usually say is based on what they have read from from good sources okay from reliable sources. So this is what IBL has done. It's not my credit as a mother, no es que yo los he criado así, it's the credit of IBL in their lives. So what about you teachers, if you can do that for your students, if you can make your students to say something based on an evidence because you have trained your students to work that, that, that way with the use of IBL not only for language, but for life, okay? And um, other thing that I can tell you, um, uh, well, this, this, uh, this uh, slide 
is um, fuera de lugar. It's something about um, engage your students with some some uh, reports, speeches, uh, something very uh, convincing and so on. But what I want to tell you is this part, uh, that every person who have developed the IBL methodology in their lives is like us teachers, is like us teachers, very convincing, very engaging, okay, as us. And I can tell you that uh, with the experience of my own children, okay? They are very convincing, they're very engaging because they manage the truth or the information based on evidence, okay? And that's good for communication, for a better world maybe, okay? Obviously, if it is well used. Now, uh, some... Um, differentiation between the some differences between the uh, normal class and an I, an ideal lesson plan okay in the in the normal class lesson plan we work this way first we uh, engage our students okay same as every class then we go and explain our students what's happening and here comes the developed part where we help our students or guide our students in a, in a, in a practice that is guided, modeled, and a, a very uh, a supportive or, or scaffolding way of working with our students. Finally, they, you give them a freer practice where they uh, can conclude and uh, reflect on that. And here would happen that your students are a little lost and tells you, Hey, Miss, I don't get this this thing, or is the exercise is not it's not good. It's not giving me a good result, or the experiment is not working, or whatever you're working with. But the thing here is that they need your guide, your help, and then you go with your students and explain again and help him or her in order to find the solution or work and practice more. Meanwhile, the other parts of the class is working by their own or in groups. It doesn't matter, but they need your help in here. And that's good. I don't say that, that it is not good. That is so good because this is a way that we were we are working by now. And it's a good way. But with IBL, remember that you are not allowed to tell the answer. So it doesn't happen the same that happens here. OK, here in the IBL lesson plan, you're going to uh, make your students to explore the answers, to find the answers, to say the answers, to share the answers. And in group, they have to de determine if the answer is correct or not. And it might not be correct. And here you come as a teacher, not saying the solution, but to inquiring them in order to notice that they are some, there is something missing so they can go back anytime to change the hypothesis. So same, begin with some engaging uh, topic, then they are going to uh, make the hypothesis, then, then they are going to find the answers or uh, something to support those hypotheses. And if they think that this is okay, they accept it, they go and find something to prove them. But if they notice that something is not okay, they can go back anytime again and change the hypothesis. If, if everything goes well, then you can go to the part where you experiment and try it and then you determine that that is the truth and you can extend it or share it with others. And here in this moment of extension, when you share it with others in the conclusion, then Again, someone can ask you something that makes you doubt or want to know more, and then you can go back again, change the hypothesis or look for more information to support it or to, to find other kinds of solutions too, okay? So that's the main difference. Remember, in the usual lesson plan, the ones that we use actually by now, it's a good idea. We can help our students and perfect. But in IBL, you cannot help the students the same way we will help in our usual and normal classes. You have to make them to look for inf more information and more information. And some of you may ask, okay, but what happens if my student is not 
so big to try to find uh, solutions or something in the internet and so on. I mean, initial levels. In initial levels, we work in a different, in a little different way. In initial levels, we, we um, as teachers, you know that we have to uh, set their knowledge. Okay, we have to tell them the answers because they are learning. They are, we are putting all the information in their heads by now. But how to work with initial levels and IBL? It's very easy. The moment when your students may ask something, an example, this is just an example. Maybe you have some prompts for them like, what is, what is, or uh, where, uh, where is, some basic questions. Uh, then someone can ask you something like, Miss, what is a cat? And obviously, as, a, as an initial level teacher, you may show the picture of a cat to your students, and that's good. But with IBL, you cannot do that from the very beginning. You have to ask other students an example. Pepito, do you know what is the noise of a cat? And Pepito might say, meow. Okay, perfect. Juanita. Can you draw a cat, please? And then Juanita makes a un modelo maltrecho de un gato. Okay, that's okay. I cannot understand what kind of a picture is that. Then I ask uh, Jose, Jose, can you please draw me a cat? And Jose draws a cap because he didn't hear you well. A cap, una gorra, it's not a cat. Okay, but you have a picture in there. Now you go to Josefina, Josefina, please, can you uh, uh, tell me what do you think is a cat? Uh, cat is a gato, miss. So you have four answers for the same questions, four different answers for the same question, and you're not telling your student what is a cat. But now in groups, we're going to decide what is a cat. We have meow, we have el dibujo maltrecho del gato, we have a cap. Now uh, uh, Jose knows that cap is not cat. Okay, he can notice that now, and he's learning something. And with the company, uh, the co a, a company of uh, the Mrs. Tatsi San Gato, then we can set that cat, it's a cat. And then you can share the picture with your students. So try to make your students to inquire first, to decide what is the answer, the solution, and then you as a teacher can uh, certify the, um, the, the, the answer that they have, okay? Uh, that is working with, with, a, with initial levels. In primary, is a little more easier, but it takes time. At the beginning, you cannot, as I told you, once you finish this, this webinar, you're not uh, ready to work with IBL. What you have to do is to make your students uh, be used to IBL, okay? Um, and for that, we will need some things that I'm going to explain you a little later. Before we're going to that part, and just let me tell you the parts of the use of the language here in each of the of the stages of the of the plan. At the beginning, remember, in the orientation is a part of discussion. What do you think, kids, about this or that topic? And they begin telling you some ideas. Okay. Then, then uh, we come with, with those ideas that they give you, we can form the hypothesis or have some other questions. With that, you, with the hypothesis, you can go to the experimentation and with the questions, you can go to the exploration, but it is almost the same. Here we are in the part of the, the discussion and when we are going to find the data or the answers about that, then we go to the part of the investigation and reflection. Here we're going to notice if it, is, if it is working, then we can go to the next part. If it is not working, we can go back to the uh, conceptualization part that is the question and the hypothesis, okay? Then uh, once you determine uh, 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 which one is the answer of this, then we go to the part of the conclusion that is a, a commu the communication part, of course, because we are uh, uh, telling others our findings 
and others are going to discuss about what we have found out, okay? So this is a part of a conclusion. And of course, remember all the time we can go back and find something else, okay? Or maybe we can begin another topic related to the first one, but it is a completely different one, okay? So as I told you, for these, for these, uh, we probably these, these days, we won't have too much time to work with these. Uh, as I told you, in my school, we used to uh, have one hour a week to discuss IBL, uh, uh, ABL's uh, session uh, uh, questions and so on with our students. But as we as English teachers have our need to cover a, 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 a curriculum, then we may think that we don't have too much time. For, for that, obviously, we have a fantastic tool that is internet, okay? In internet, uh, we can work with the forums and we have forums in Estela, in platform Estela and in RLP and in Richmond Learning Platform, we have forums. And what can we do with the forums? We can set the questions in there, okay? And our students can tell us the answers, their findings, their thoughts, their ideas, their feelings, everything. This is a space for communication. And the good thing is that it's completely asynchronously, okay? So here, if you uh, use these forums, then you won't have to take the time of your uh, lessons, for everyday lessons, and you can work in a parallel way in order to set how to work with IBL. Once the way of working with IBL is set, is it, your students know what to do, how to work with IBL, what are the prompts, et cetera, et cetera, then you can go to have an IBL lesson in your, in your usual uh, period of class. And let me warn you that it's not, a, it's, it's a little difficult to have an IBL lesson in, um, in, in, lower, in lower levels, okay? Lower levels are for setting the way of working, but from fifth grade and on, then it's uh, more probably that you can develop an, an IBL lesson, okay? Because they are uh, like uh, more mature, more ready to, or, uh, or more willing to work with some prompts and so on. But at the beginning, at the initial levels, uh, second graders, third graders, this is a time to set how to work step by step, okay? These are prompts, these are regulatory cards, these are some activities that we can do. Let's inquire, let's um, uh, ask some others, let's read something in here, let's find and uh, determine what do you think is a solution, Let's discuss about that and so on. So set the steps for working in the IBL methodology on the first levels, and then go and work in IBL lesson from uh, fifth graders and on, okay? As you can notice, this methodology is the same as, as, as the one that we use in universities, okay? We in the university go and the teachers say something and we have to find information and make some, some, uh, um, some like thesis, something to, to, to reply or to answer the questions that the, the teacher, had, the problem that we have. So it's something like the university, but we are preparing our students for that step, that big step in the university from the very beginning. So the moment they get up to there, they are completely ready to work in any way. And of course, they have another uh, conception of the world because they are inquiring all the time and they want to know more about everything that surrounds them. And that is uh, what, can, what I can tell you. I'm going to finish this presentation with uh, just some suggestion to involve families in these um, uh, IBL lessons. Uh, I don't know, through service maybe or through uh, some... Uh, uh, forums to families so that we can work with the answers of the families too. It's a good option always to work in teams, always work in teams. It's uh, much, much better. And um, uh, 
uh, don't forget to give time to your students to collide activities, to work together, to discuss, to debate, and to determine what is the truth. And finally, and most important, make your students notice what have they learned. This is this metacognitive part of the of the of the sessions is very uh, valuable. You have to make them to understand that they have learned something in, in what way have they worked and what have they have learned that. So that's it. I um, think I have finished here and I would like to know if you have any question about uh, this, uh, uh, this methodology so I can answer to you. And um, that's it, nothing else. Let me know, please. No questions? No question. Okay, I think then, uh, Anderson, we can uh, share the link for the evaluation form yeah. right now and uh, let Thank the teachers to be free. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ms. Luli, for this wonderful presentation about AVL. Um, well, dear teachers, as uh, Ms. Luli said before, you can find in the chat box the link for the attendance. So thank you very much for being with us today. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.